All right. Uh, I was thinking of a project in the back of my mind that would use pulse width modulation. And I don't think I've mentioned pulse width modulation on the channel, so we'll, we'll call this a basics course. Um, so if you have a device and, uh, you know, it's either on or off, right? So this is, this is a one and a zero. So it's either off or it's on. And, uh, the, uh, brightness or the speed of a motor or something like that, you can, um, maybe do voltage differences. So instead of zero to one, you might do zero to 0.7 or zero to 0.4 or something. And that would vary, you know, the speed of the motor or the brightness of a, of a light bulb or something. But you can also do that in the time domain. So if you have the uh, light bulb and you turn it on and then you wait some time and then you turn it off and then you turn it on and then you turn it off, then on average, it's going to only generate half of the light that if you'd left it on all the time, right? And then so you can imagine you can have uh, small pulses at the same frequency. The frequency is the same, but the width of the pulse is different, right? This is a long width of a pulse and this is a short width. And if this is the period of your, or of your system, you, you can either have no modulation, you can have a very, very short modulation, you can have a longer modulation, or you could have a 100% modulation. You could turn it on all the way. And that is pulse width modulation. You're not changing the frequency of the of the system but you're changing the percentage time on right what percent of the time are you enabling the device and that is pulse width modulation um so uh let's play with that um also you'll hear it called pwm pulse width modulation all right so I thought I was I was thinking of a motor project, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use a light bulb. I've got this weird light bulb here. I, I would like to know the circuit for this light bulb. It's got some diodes in it for rectification in case you plug this into a uh, an AC. Although it says DC on it, it says 12 volts DC. So this is supposed to be a DC bulb, but it should run on AC as well because it would work in either directions. Uh, it won't be as bright because the AC will be you know, only on certain points of the time. But anyway, I don't know. It says DC 12. Um, but there are some, I believe those are diodes in there. Um, pretty sure. So uh, it has pins that are not keyed in any way. So you can plug it in this way or you can plug it in this way. So the diodes just figure out to send the voltage in. And then there's no electronics in this thing. It's just a bunch of LEDs and some dropping resistors. So uh, I need to reverse engineer this someday and figure out how they how they wired this thing up. Anyway, we're gonna be varying the, um, the brightness of a light bulb. Okay, I'm gonna be using a, uh, a photo diode. It's about a three millimeter by three millimeter square, uh, square photo diode. Nice large diode, so it'll pick up uh, generate more current, be easier for you to read here in the lab. I don't need to have a whole trans impedance amplifier and everything. I can just read the, I can just read how many microamps is coming off this thing just with a voltmeter. So we will do it the easy way. And uh, I need to attach this to the, uh, to the light bulb. Okay. The circuit we're going to be using is a, uh, as a light bulb. Normally I would I would say this is a this is a light bulb, but actually, our light bulb is going to be a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of LEDs and and uh, a little bit fancier than that even. Anyway, we'll just draw it that way. A whole bunch of LEDs, and this will be hooked to plus 12 volts, and then we will hook this to an FET uh, uh, N channel FET, and uh, we will have a, uh, a gate over here. And I'll just go ahead and put a resistor on the gate just for just for good engineering practices. I'll just put a 1K in there because it's laying on the desk. And then we'll run in uh, we'll run in uh, zero to five volt pulses. That should turn this this uh, device on. Uh, this device is a um, uh, I R F 
what is it is it z44 yeah very common very very common uh in uh, in channel mosfet they're really good all right so for the pulse generator we're going to be using the waveform generator inside the inside here it comes out on a connector um you can set the frequency and then the pulse width, right? So we're going to keep the frequency constant and we're going to just vary the pulse width. Um, now, if you turn on an LED pulse modulated and it's low frequency, it's going to, it's going to, it's, you're, you're going to see it flickering. Okay. Anything above, you know, 60 Hertz, it's pretty hard to see. Most people can't see that. You know, under certain circumstances, you can get all the way up to maybe 300 hertz or something like that, but it's really extreme conditions. Um, but most of the time, anything anything above 60 hertz is hard to see. I'm going to be running at 100 hertz, and my eye can't detect anything wrong with the LED at 100 hertz, and it just makes the math easier for me. So I'm going to be running at 100 hertz, and I'm going to vary the vary the width. All right, for this example, we're going to be using this. Um, uh, LED. It's a 12 volt device. It has um, some rectification in it and capacitors and stuff to make it go. You can plug it in either way. It's me meant for AC and then it, it rectifies it to DC and lights the LEDs. But anyway, um, they don't really work well at DC, but it, and it like I said, it, it, it uh, all the way on, all the way off, they, they work really good but not necessarily in between so that's a good way we're going to want to dim this we're going to be using pulse width modulation so uh, what I have is I have a photodiode strapped to the side of it it's looking at the light the photodiode's current is being monitored over here at uh, one microamp if I put a put a cloth over the top of it, it should go down yeah there we go that's dark 0.02 um, uh, so if we pick this up, we're seeing room light, okay? And then if we turn the LED on, um, we're going to be seeing more, more current, all right? All right, so we have more current. I'll put the, put the rag over it so that it's not being influenced by ambient, okay? So again, if we turn it off, we'll get zero microamps. All right, so I'm going to move this over next to the oscilloscope so you can see it nicely. And we can just kind of go over there. All right, so let's turn it pulse modulation back on. So here we have it at about 10%. Uh, it's on about 10% of the time. These pulses go high. And we're getting about, what, 110 microamps. Let's turn it on twice as long. Uh, 175, let's turn it on half of the time, uh, 5, 9, and then let's turn it on uh, all the time, uh, and we've got about 1200, 1200 microamps. So there we go, we can adjust the brightness of this, of this thing, and we have pretty good control over it, because um, we're not working... Uh, working at real low voltage levels where things can kind of vary with temperature and other things. This is a much more stable way to do it. Let's go here to, uh, this is 1% uh, on, which is 11 microamps, 11 total microamps. That's about 1% of the brightness, right? And uh, let's see if we can go even lower than that. Under microseconds, let's go 50 microseconds. That's like half a percent. Yeah, it's still, we're still getting a little bit of, uh, still getting a little bit of light. If we turn it off, it goes to zero. So yeah, it's really, really dim right now. Let's go to 10 microseconds. And now we're right around one one thousandth of the, uh, of the brightness. Let's, uh, let's, did you see that? I'm sorry, this thing doesn't stay on. It doesn't stay on very long. All right, let's kind of look at how bright it is now. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's really dark. Those, those suckers are just barely, barely lit. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, I wanted to mention one thing, which was uh, I talked about the refresh rate of the light bulb needing to be fast enough so a human doesn't see the flicker. Well, there's a problem with the measurement system too. If if it if your uh, meter doesn't respond or it responds too quickly, you might get a lot of dark integrated as well. And so the um, uh, the way, the screwed way I was using this as a light meter, it has to do with the response time of the uh, of the DVM2. So just wanted to get that in, out there and s save you guys from compending. I don't know. That wasn't a very cohesive video, but <laughs> I was just having fun in the garage. Um, and I may be thinking about this pulse width modulation thing in the future. So I was just trying to trying to figure out some ideas. Um, so anyway, yeah, pulse width modulation. There's pulse position modulation, pulse frequency modulation, other types of pulse modulations as well.